In a previous video, I documented a few different ways to try to get Autodesk Fusion 360 up and running on Linux, and none of them were really that great of an option. However, that's kind of changed, and now, as you can see, I have Fusion 360. It is running on Fedora 41, and I'm not doing this in a virtual machine. This is through Wine. And so in this video, I'll show you how to do that install. It's pretty easy. It just takes a little bit of time. But once you're done, you might have yourself a working, really high quality CAD system on Linux. And this is all going to be thanks to the GitHub from Steve Zabko, who's got a script set up to install Fusion 360 through Wine on Linux. And I've checked this and it seems to work for the most part. So I've come out to the wiki and if we click on documentation, this will tell us what we need to do to get this thing set up. So here it says installing the installer package. So it says install the package yad on your computer and then run this command. And so the first thing we need to do is just to get some prereqs out of the way. So I've got a terminal fired up and just so you're all aware, I am running Fedora 41. Everything's pretty up to date. I'm on an NVIDIA graphics card. So, you know, different systems, this may or may not work as well. It's mostly functional, but I wouldn't be surprised if depending on what distro you're on, you might run into different problems. But we do need to install some things before we run this script. So I'm going to install Wine, Wine Tricks, and Yad. It's installing a whole bunch of stuff here. And like I said, the, the big things are you need Wine. And it may be useful for you to understand that on Fedora, whenever you install Wine, I believe you are actually installing Wine Staging, which is a specific branch of Wine that's a little bit more advanced than just the basic installer. Wine Tricks is useful for doing a couple of other things with Wine and configuration and installing various DLLs and stuff. And then YAD is required by the installer script that we're going to get from GitHub. And as dependencies, you see it installs a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to hit yes, and it's going to go ahead and install everything. All right, now everything's installed. We're going to go back over to the wiki on the GitHub. And here is what we need to run from the terminal. It's going to be making a directory in our home user folder. So the directory is going to be hidden. It's Fusion 360. It will create a bin folder. It will then go into that folder. It's going to go out to the GitHub and download the installer script. And then it's going to allow that script to be ran. So that's what this command is going to do. Okay, so like I said, when we run this, it's just going to create a couple folders, go in there and download the installer script, and then run the installer script. All right, so here we go. The installer script starts up a install wizard. So we're going to go into preferences. I'm going to select English as my language, and then I'm going to run on DXVK. That's the DirectX to Vulkan. OK, then OK again. Now it's got some terms and conditions basically saying, look, uh, Steve is not responsible for anything that breaks on you. And then we hit OK again. I'm just going to leave the installation directory to default and the Wine version. Um, I'm going to tell it that Wine is already installed on the system. I have ran this thing with the installer putting in Wine for me, but I haven't found that to work as well. So I'm going to use the version that I've already installed. And this installer will take a bit to run. So give it a good 10, 15 minutes while this thing sets up. And it has been installed. The installation is complete. Now, if you want to run it, you just come to your start menu, type in Fusion 360. And there are a couple of different ways to run it. These are basically the same thing. One actually checks for software updates. So it says, would you like to check for updates to Fusion 360? It says no newer version was found. So, OK, now we click sign in and it has opened up a window and this is the web deploy. It's working. So now I have to sign in and now it's going to load up Fusion 360. All right, and there we are all loaded up. And so as you can see, it's pretty easy to pull in files from your Autodesk Fusion Cloud stuff. And also, I will say that performance is really good. Again, you know, it's very snappy. You can see it has no problem rendering. Frame rates are quite high. The UI all functions as I would expect. So anytime you want to select something and nodes and lines, everything pretty much gets highlighted correctly. So I haven't ran into any issues yet with that. 
Really, the only thing that I've found so far is that occasionally whenever you're doing drawings and things like that, you can see usually Fusion will have a good highlighted box outlining things. And I do find that there are times when some of the line shading isn't quite right. And so that suggests to me, again, something in the graphics still isn't quite perfect, but it's certainly usable and that hasn't caused me any problems so far. Now, up in the right, there is a notification that is pretty important. And so, you know, I've mentioned Fusion is running, sort of. There are a couple of issues currently. So now, this little notification does not impact current functionality, but it will require some changes in the future because they are getting rid of DX9 and OpenGL and everything's going to have to run through DX11. There is a way to switch over to DX11 in the preferences. However, I have not gotten that to work yet. So it is usable in its current state, but going forward, whenever they remove that DX9 support, there will need to be some sort of solution to get this thing up and running on DX11. There are some people online that say that they have it working, but again, I have not been able to get that to work. Now, one of the other issues that I've found is that the preferences do take forever to load currently. So if I go up and I click and I go to open preferences, nothing's going to happen for a pretty good time. It takes like 30 seconds to a minute for these things to open. All right, now after waiting a while, the preferences do load up. Now I'm not going to show you, but here is where you could change over to DirectX 11 if you wanted. I'm not going to do that because again, whenever I do that, I just get a big black screen where the render is supposed to be because again, DX11, I, I can't get it working currently. There are also still some graphics bugs. So here you can see some of the menu system being drawn even when the window is minimized. And that's kind of weird. So um, again, that's been that way for a little bit. It doesn't really affect anything for my use because typically if I'm going to be using Fusion, I'm not really worried about something else or I can move my other programs over to another monitor. But clearly this is an issue. And so in my brief usage, again, I found nothing that hasn't really worked. It's mostly been just a couple of very minor kind of graphics issues, but Fusion 360 appears to be totally usable. And this is a big game changer because you know, for me, this is one of the only tasks remaining that I really had to have Windows for. High quality 3D modeling is something that, you know, I use, you know, not every day, but often enough that... It's important. And so now I have the ability to do this without switching over to Windows. And so being able to do this in Linux is a big deal for me being able to move completely over to a Linux only platform. Now, like I said, if you're running a different distribution, different graphics, you may find different things work better or worse for you. I can't speak to every sort of configuration that people are going to have, but for my use, so far, so good. So that's all I've got for this video. I just wanted to kind of demo the installation and performance that I'm getting just to show people what you can expect. And just to follow up on a previous video that I had made that, you know, the situation has changed somewhat. So as always, if you got any feedback or comments, feel free to leave that down below.